Shabbat Hagadol, the Great Sabbath, is given its name because of the prophetic reading from the third chapter of the prophet Malachi that God will send eventually the Yom Gadol Venora, the great and awesome day where Elijah the prophet will come. Fahishiv Levavot al Banim Banim Alavotam. He will restore the hearts of the children to the parents and the parents to the children, all united in the service of God. And it's Elijah the prophet because his task is to be the herald of the coming of the Messiah. He will bring the, ti- the tidings of Yeshuot v'Nechamot, of salvations and comforts at the time of the rebuilding of the Holy Temple during the Messianic Age of Redemption. That's Messiah. That's Elijah the prophet. And Elijah the prophet, according to Jewish tradition, actually Jewish lore, Elijah the prophet never died. The picture in the book of Kings is that he entered a cloud and the cloud went up to heaven. And he was, in accordance with the theological term, translated. He wasn't buried. He was translated to heaven, removed to heaven, and he constantly travels between heaven and earth. And he travels between heaven and earth in order to communicate with Jews and in order to help Jews. And as you know, he is an honored guest at every circumcision ceremony and at every Passover Seder. The question is, what is he doing at these two celebrations? And why? And what is the message that Jewish tradition is trying to convey by telling us that Elijah the prophet is at these various celebrations. And I'd like to suggest something. Elijah the prophet is known to be, according to the words of the prophetic writings, a kanai, an extremist, a zealot for the Lord. And as a result, he often gets impatient with the Jewish people. So impatient, in fact, that after a very dramatic moment, and he manages to make an experiment, and he wants to prove to the Jews who are following after the idol Baal that the Lord is our God, he makes a contest on Mount Carmel. And 600,000 Jews are watching on the bottom of the mountain. And there are the prophets of Baal, the prophet of the Lord. The prophets of Baal give their sacrifices, and Elijah gives his sacrifice. And fire comes down from heaven, accepting Elijah's sacrifice. And all of the Jews cry out, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. In the very next chapter in the book of Kings, Elijah wants to die. Why does he want to die? He wants to die because everyone was so excited and all the Jews cried out, the Lord, he is God. And I would imagine that Elijah came home that night and he felt so proud of himself and so grateful to God But he realized that if it was this great religious revival and everyone saw that God responded to their sacrifice, what's going to happen? There aren't enough synagogues. There aren't enough seats in Dafyomi classes. There aren't enough classrooms in the religious system of education. Everybody's going to want to send their child to yeshiva. Everyone's going to want to attend Dafyomi. Everyone's going to want to come to Minyan in the morning. 
And he stays up all night arranging for extra classrooms and extra teachers and extra pews. And alas, the difference is negligible and nobody really changed. So Elijah wants to die. And Elijah says to God about the Jewish people, they do not guard your covenant. And Elijah is impatient with himself and with the Israelites. And I believe that God does two things. One thing which is written and one thing which I'm positing. The first thing that God says is, Elijah, listen to a great wind. But God is not in the wind. Look at a great fire, but God is not in the fire. Pay attention to the loud thunder, but God is not in the thunder. Call the Mama Daka, the still small voice, that's where God is. God says to Elijah, you are not giving enough respect to the Jewish people. Great miracles, Stephen Spielberg events, Cecil B. DeMille, splittings of the Reed Sea, these histrionics don't change anybody. Changes come with a still, small voice of steady and continuous commitment. The circumcision ceremony that expresses faith in our covenant with God. A Seder that tells us that we believe that God will ultimately redeem us. Elijah, you're going to go to every single circumcision and every single Passover Seder. And you will see the steady commitment, soft but clear and continuous of the Jewish people. And you'll believe in them and they'll believe in themselves. Shabbat HaGadol is the great Sabbath before the Pesach Seder when we will all meet up with Elijah the prophet. Shabbat Shalom.